on June 3rd, you passed down. <laughs> Uh, you received the great news, perhaps you received the news beforehand that you were selected for the Cannes Film Festival. Um, I really want to um, make the point that this is a really special interview just on, on my end and uh, just the selection itself belongs to, we'll, we'll look back at 2020 for the mm. rest of our lives and saying, oh that was that edition. So you're part <laughs> of the fabric of whatever this is, mm. we still haven't figured it out. Just prior to Nadia Butterfly, I want to delve back into your filmography. Mm. So um, you cut your teeth on the short form pretty much for the last decade. Um, and within that, you do have a feature doc. You also have a Fake Tattoos, mm. uh, which was at Slamdance and the Berlin Film Festival. Um, I was wondering what, A, working on a lot of uh, short films and with regards to um, sound design, how mm. that's sort of like helped informed you on uh, on your sophomore fiction feature. And, um, is there any connecting tissue between your first feature film and this film, mm. which, which one feels ultra low budget microscopic indie, mm -hmm. and this one benefited from some you know some More financing yeah. exactly. So I, I think. There is. Uh, I, I I hope people will. Well, well, first, not that many people have seen it, so 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 it's hard. I didn't uh, hear that much uh, parallel uh, so mm -hmm. far. I'm kind of eager to have eventually reviews of the film, and because I because uh, I, I I'm also a big cinephile and I read reviews, so obviously I, I read the reviews for, of, of my own films. But um, but yeah, no, I, I I think the way we treated the time and long takes, not in a flashy fashion, but more in a kind of a, a low key, we kind of forget the camera is rolling kind of way. That's yeah. the way we, we treated the time and, and the, the mise en scène and the in fake tattoos. That is very much still there in uh, Nadia. Uh, though with sound, because uh, I do a lot, uh, you mentioned it, but I do a lot of sound design on other people's film. And I got to do horror films or I got to do sci-fi films as a sound designer. And I always go nuts with sounds on other people's film. But uh, it earned my shorts or fake tattoos. It, it was more character driven, kind of a. It, it, it didn't allow for us to go crazy with sound. It just would feel out of place. Whereas Nadia has a very distinct quality to it. Uh, I think water and swimming is such a cinematographic uh, uh, discipline. Uh, when you are emerged in the water, there is something going on, obviously, with sound. You're in another element. And we, we, we went full full on crazy with, with sound in, in Nadia. I'm, I'm especially proud of the sound design. And we treated it also in a very subjective way because uh, Nadia is in almost every shot of the film. We really follow her closely. So we live her experience in a very subjective first person uh, uh, way. That also includes all the sports scenes and uh, and yeah, so we, we got to we got to really go nuts with sound on this time around. You notice yeah. it, uh, so you released a teaser um, of the of the film. Mm. The, I think it was the day of the, the day of yes, yes, yes. And um, we, we slapped the logo like in the morning because we received the logo. We, we, we well first we knew of the can selection the night up before, so it, it gave us very little time to adapt. And then in the morning they sent us the the, the laurel. We put the laurel in the teaser that was. Unfortunately, already ready, and yeah, we released the teaser pretty much at the same time uh, that they announced. Yeah, yeah. And what I was gonna say about yeah. the teaser is that you're very much in her headspace. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, we first we see her receiving questions, but we don't see her receiving questions. She's on a podium or something. She's getting ready for a swim, mm -hmm. but she's receiving questions or fielding questions from the media, and then she's um, then you have a shot. Um, where she's in her own lane, but she's also in her lane uh, from a sonar aspect because mm -hmm. what the we don't she's she's competing and we don't hear the sound from the other swimmers on the side of her. It's, it's, so I thought it was very um, mm -hmm. yeah. It says a lot about what we might expect um, mm. for for ninety plus minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, an hour forty seven minutes the the final running time. But yeah, you know you're right. I, I felt it was very important for us in the teaser to try and get uh, back, well longer shots because that also is more uh, um, that's more I guess the style of the of the full feature so just having a, a, a bunch of images uh, all scattered would uh, do it justice I, I knew for the teaser we wanted to have a sound based uh, piece yeah. uh, but uh, and and we've just finished an, a, a trailer that will eventually uh, 
when maybe if we have an announcement for a festival in the fall we'll have a, a, a trailer released alongside uh, and obviously in the trailer we get the more uh, not more conventional that's not necessarily what but uh, more, more more, more, yeah more narrative yeah of say right what you know um, <laughs> was this an exercise where you wanted to go in areas that were unknown to you um, well again so I used to be a swimmer so that aspect I knew mm -hmm. I retired from swimming but I did it at national level not crazy international level as the protagonist like the, uh, Catherine Savard the, the swimmer she, she did she's a two-time Olympian and she's still going at it at 27 she, she just turned 27 years old so for her retirement is very different uh, so I knew the swimming component um, I I'd never been to the Olympics so I had to consult for that I still had to do quite a lot of research actually it just my personal experience didn't validate the whole thing. Uh, we, I still needed to have that seal of approval from ex-Olympians, for people who did it at a higher level than I did. So, so there was a lot of research uh, uh, base. And just fun fact, Catherine Savoc started off as a consultant, uh, uh, as an ex-Olympian, before we even knew she would be in the film at all. Because I, 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 in my work so far, I never wrote a character with a specific actor or person in mind. Because okay. I do enjoy the casting process a lot. Uh, so Nadia on paper was not Catherine Savard, or, or all of these characters were totally fictitious, fictional. And uh, yeah, and then we find them and uh, we so, adapt based on them after that. Yeah. So for you, the curiosity point was to get at the, the, the highest. Uh, level of competition was that one facet because the film explores so it's crazy to think that people retire at age 20 without any gray hairs but yeah, that's yeah. the case it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. In, in the 20s yeah 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 these machines mm -hmm. retire um, like michael phelps might be the exception but um was your curiosity mm -hmm. to to go beyond the points that you had achieved is that where is that where the oh uh, maybe maybe because um, I still had a lot of friends when I stopped at 19 and I started to do cinema and, for, and, and Concordia didn't have a swim team so that made it easy for me to be like alright no it's good that, that chapter of my life is gone uh, but I still had friends that did uh, the, either the Beijing the London Olympics or even the Rio ones um, so, 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 so I, I had people in my entourage that went beyond the level that, that, I, that I went through uh, and, and I saw just lots of retirement and some of them went gracefully, some of them went the exact opposite. <laughs> I saw so many things, so that those fictitious characters are all based on uh, friends or uh, connaissance, people that I knew that went through maybe sometimes harder time and more complex times than I did. Um, so yeah, maybe it was, and also it was so much fun to go back to uh, that circle of, of swimming because I, I, I've, I've been dedicated for a decade now uh, fully to, to cinema so I don't get to, to, to be around all those athletes anymore but it was so much fun on set to have real athletes and to it, it brought me back in 2008 2007 when I was actively doing it and I was a swimmer so your DP yeah. on this uh, <coughs> she worked on early Xavier Dolan film. she also worked with Guy Madden is actually mm -hmm. a quite quite a remarkable film yeah. um, yes yes so Stephanie uh, wh what are some non film references were you looking at mm. especially for the first portion where where it's that world were you looking at like like sporting footage from like mm -hmm. ABC or stuff like that mm -hmm. or like how, like what was the strategy outside of cinema what are references that uh, uh well for starters the the olympics coverage of swimming is is gorgeous like when you when you look that, that's why i think swimming is is uh, uh, there's uh, gymnastics athletics and swimming is almost one of the most watched sports at the olympics um it is very well shot they have um great camera setups in exactly yeah. exactly yeah 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 underwater over water it's it's beautiful to look at Though we didn't want to look like what you see on TV. The whole film is about like the behind the scene of the Olympics. So that meant going very different than, than, the, than the coverage, even though it is gorgeous. We didn't also want to make it look retro. So uh, even the choice of aspect ratio is weird. We did a 1.5 on 1, which okay. is a, a ratio that doesn't exist. Because we didn't want to do it 4 by 3 because then it would be an instant throwback to, to, to old 
coverage. We don't want to do it 16 by 9 because that would be a direct reference to the HD contemporary coverage of the Olympics. Uh, for so many reasons, we didn't want to use a scope. Uh, 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 yeah. It just didn't fit. You the, don't the, want the, the glossy aspect. I guess, I guess. But so, so we, we basically invented a ratio that is in between 4.3 and, and 16 by 9 to make it something different. But, so anyway, long story short is that we wanted to have a, a way of filming swimming that is very, very, very different and felt very more intimate than the gorgeous footage that you get to see watching the Olympics. So there's that. Um, uh, what did we watch? We didn't watch that many films uh, as references. I think Stephanie knows that I'm a big John Cassavetes fan and recently I love the, the Andre Arnold or Harmony Corinne's film. Um, but uh, we watched videos, music videos. We, what did we watch? No, I think I think we really based we designed the visual and the sound of the film really based on the screenplay. We didn't get to watch that many other people's film, and I think that's why I'm proud of Nadia. At the, in the end of the day, is that it doesn't look what well, once people get to see it, they'll, they'll they'll judge for themselves. But I don't think people will be able to pinpoint like, oh, it's there's an obvious, this filmmaker is obviously referenced by this or that filmmaker. I, I think it's k kind of a nutball and... Uh, it and very punk. Yeah, in a way, in a way. And yet it's a very Canadian Olympics, there's, you know, all of this going on, but... But that's why I'm, I, I, that's, I'm the most proud of this film. Uh, it's because I cannot pinpoint exactly what are the filmmakers. In fact, tattoos, it's easy to be like, oh, there's a dash of uh, Richard Linklater, or, and there's a dash of The Spectacular Now, or Like Crazy, or you know, those films here and there. Um, with Nadia, I, I cannot even see myself being like, oh no, this film, this film, this film. It's none of that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Some Drake Duramus and James Pond stuff <coughs> mentioned in this interview, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so let's discuss the Tokyo segment. Um, mm -hmm. So you. You filmed, I think the way it works for certain Olympic sports is that the athletes actually have the opportunity to go to the host city the year before. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in swimming, because in the, in the swimming you, you qualify in April for the games that are uh, in July. Yeah. Uh, so you do the Olympics trial um, four or five months before so the Olympics. how is it that you ended up a, going to Tokyo <laughs> out of all places yes, yeah. and how important was it for you to embed that like I mean it could have been any Olympic pool you could have saved mm -hmm. a, a ton of a ton of money was it because all the all the variables were in one place and were able to get like a certain um, mm -hmm. uh, docu realism aestheticism was it was it because the setup was just so hard to pass up mm. well we actually did not want the documentary feel like we've always very much uh, embraced the almost the parallel universe or or the metaphorical olympics yeah uh we very much embraced that from the get-go because uh, uh there is a film that played in uh, i think south by southwest last year that is called olympic dream and <laughs> with with the approval of the olympic committee and they shot actually like with they shot during the winter Olympics in Pyeongchang oh, it, yeah. at the real yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's gonna come out maybe uh, maybe I, is it about running no it's okay. about uh, uh, is it ski de fond uh, okay, is okay, it okay, okay. Uh, yeah so it's at the Winter Olympics but the point is we didn't want to infiltrate uh, uh, the which we ended up doing a little bit but in a way more uh, metaphorical way we didn't want to necessarily like do a, 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 a was it escape from tomorrow you know the the film that they shot in the disney disney world oh, and yes. they just like stole oh the God, whole yeah. disney world yeah, thing yeah, yeah. the black and white, the black and white yeah. which is a very uh, i'm not a big fan of it anyway but um we, ne we didn't really want to do that because that then it would uh, bound the mise-en-scene to be um too much akin to documentary in a weird way yeah. uh which i love documentaries but that's just not what we wanted to do with nadia so we assumed that we would recreate it, we would make it very parallel universe-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but we did go to Tokyo, of all places. Well, Tokyo, th there's an instant, well, there's many variables to that answer. For starters, when you do international swim meets, you get to go to so many cities, but you don't get to visit them in a normal way. 
it's almost like you're in a cage in another different in a different city and Tokyo of all places there's so much ex I guess from an occidental point of view exoticism in a weird way like you're at the ex other end of the world and yet you're still swimming in pools and pools look alike everywhere in the world you are in the hotel in the residence hotel rooms they look alike everywhere in the world so you feel trapped even though you're at the other end of the world and there's a big uh, there's a scene where she actually re branches out and she get to visit tokyo for the first time because she's retired and she just wants she wants out she wants um, to breathe. yeah she wants to breathe exactly exactly uh, so we, we wanted to have a, 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 a canadian team that is away um, and, and uh, yeah that, that was part of the way we have we, we we wrote the psychology of the character for sure uh, there's so many variables even the reference to the title the nadia butterfly the, but there's i guess a madame butterfly uh, reference there nadia obviously refers to uh, maybe nadia Comaneci and it, it, it smells actually, like olympics actually, for let's sure let's talk about the title because it's uh, i was very drawn by the title mm. um these athletes are the, 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 the name is, the, the title of your film is called Nadia Butterfly. It erases her family name in a way. It's, mm -hmm. it's her first name and her family name is not visible. And I was thinking of athletes as cogs in a machine. Like mm -hmm. they belong to, they can't detach themselves from the sport that they've committed their lives to. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's a very powerful, mm -hmm. a, a powerful statement just to make with, 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 um, with the title is mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. um, is your your essentially your your she's branded as that thing mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. she is no longer until she becomes Nadia something else. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I was wondering if you could perhaps delve into the title choice. I know you've had it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what's the importance <laughs> yeah. or the significance behind right. behind that? Besides the, yeah, yeah. the these, there's these all other yeah. uh, factors. components. Yeah. Well. But just titles are weird. It's either the first thing you get, you, you don't even have a screenplay and you have a title in your head, or it's like the very last thing that you change because like you, you cannot choose the right title. I've had both in, in either in my short films or there's been a few times where it's like the title was there from the get-go. Nadza Butterfly is one title that it, it's, it's very much this case. Um, so yeah, obviously, well, butterfly, there's a double meaning there. There's a swimming stroke, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, she's a butterfly swimmer in the film. Uh, pff, butterfly references a lot to, instantly you think about moving from one state to another. Yeah. Uh, you remember, and, and there's obviously like, let's say sport was this weird chrys chrys uh, chrysalis in English. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and she, she wants out of this. She wants to bloom. Yeah. She wants to blossom as something else. She wants to redefine herself. So there's that component. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's very much about somebody who wants out and, and she's, when you, when you watch the film, there's, um, she's prisoner of her talent too. So, mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get to a very high level and have a very conflictual, almost problematic relationship to, your, to what you're good at. And, 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 uh, and in the film she's 23, so it's fairly young, she could do a, maybe another Olympic cycle because I mean, she could continue, but she actually uh, really wants out. Just she, she wants to feel and taste and, and, and something else and get control of her life. And that's really what it's all about. But what she has to deal with is she has to revalidate her choice throughout the whole film because she understands that it means leaving a whole world behind. It's the last time with your coach, last time with your massage therapist. Even your friendships are at stake because you have such an intense friendship, but if you if you remove yourself from such a, a, a world that is lives in a vacuum, yeah. exactly, uh, maybe maybe it's maybe maybe the, the friendships won't follow. Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. So the character understands. She, at at that first, state? yeah, What's exactly. That state so at first, exactly. Yeah. So let's say the, the, her initial state is that. She wants out, but for, I guess for selfish reasons that are valid, uh, they're valid reasons, but they're self-centered reasons. And she evolves throughout the film and she understands the scope of her choice. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. So the, the moving from one state to another, evolving, the, uh, hence the butterfly, uh, is very much a, 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 an intricate uh, a, a part of the, it's of nice. the she's, narrative. She's moving from chlorine to colorful world. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
maybe or it's gonna be hard sometimes there it sometimes retirement can be hard there's there's they even have a medical term for it like the post the post olympic blues actually exists there's so many people come out of the olympics with and and depressed there's the uh, uh, or retire michael phelps retired and went into terrible depression yeah. now and he's doing conferences around the world now talking about uh you know just when you come down of the cloud and you, the, you face the real world in such a violent way it's city when he announced the selection he actually um went into de into detail about your film and said and su suggested that that um, it could have been filmed by a female filmmaker. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, what are your impressions on on that? I took it as a compliment, for starters. Um, well, also, making a film is not just the filmmaker. You know, there's so many quotas about, you know, uh, even at Sodec, Telefilm, they look at the filmmaker, the writer, but uh, it's a whole team uh, basically contributing to what you show on screen. Our team was 60% uh, women. Uh, and we didn't necessarily do it to to like check those boxes and be I don't know hip with the the times. No, it, it's really I I felt it would very much uh, ben benefit the film to have that. Uh, for instance, a, fe a female DOP. Um, uh, that's we didn't take her because she's a girl, of but of course not because that would be reductive, so reductive of her talent, Stephanie's yeah. talent. But. Um, it, uh, it naturally contributed uh, and naturally in a very 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 natural fashion I, I think a, a good 60% of the team was uh, women I, I maybe there's a big part of that that is in at play um, also in some of my short films I've always been uh, personally interested in female characters um, I, I, I think it's good to not just talk about yourself as an artist because then it limits your speech it limit mm -hmm. Because my speech, if, if my speech is reduced to, I guess, a privileged white North American male straight, uh, I, I'd, I'd make boring, boring films very quickly. <laughs> so it's good also to be able to get out an, an, an out-of-body experience and create art based on that. Uh, yeah, no, I took, I took it as a compliment for sure, for sure. Um, so you cast a non-actor in Katrin. Um, Obviously, she had a lot to learn from you, but mm. I want to flip the switch. What did you learn from Katrin? Oh, well, she was the on-set consultant as we were filming her. So every time we would do this or that scene, uh, I, I, I would, I would al always ask questions. Uh, so does it feel authentic? Would you do it like this? Would you say things like that? I, I even on script, they helped out, and she, there were other Olympians also on set. Catherine is one, but we had another uh, uh, Rio medalist. Uh, uh, her name is Hilary Caldwell. She's from uh, Vancouver. Uh, anyway, so so they always were hands-on with what we did, and if it felt too far, uh, I almost felt the uneasiness, and then I would get to talk to them and be like, yeah, okay, so maybe maybe this is not the way you've experienced it, so maybe then we can talk to me like what, what can we do to make it even more uh, authentic and so so yeah no they they they, they helped out so much uh, on set um, they, they 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 had a creative and active uh, uh, part that's for sure that's for sure uh, and that was very flexible in the way they would be uh, delivering lines for instance um, they, they were not bound to the script as it was written. We, I, I, hear you. I, I, I made it very, it's very important with non-actors to create an environment where they're not self-conscious, where they're comfortable. And so, so we try to strip all the stress and the pressure and the, the heaviness of the cinema. Like yeah. I would never talk about continuity with them. Catherine kept playing with her hair. That drove the continuity guy nuts. But I mean, I, I will not, start to talk about her hair if I mean if I if I make her stiff and self-conscious and talk too much about focus and marks on the floor to direct them it, it, it wouldn't work so we had to adapt to them that that's that that's the big difference with working with non-actors I'd say so among those that helped you on the film we find the name of Geneviève de Lucas yeah, Geneviève. and she was in uh, she helped on fake tattoos now I discovered her cinema through a short at Sundance called The Cut. Yes, yes, yes. And I was blown away by it. It's one of my best, my favorite short films of all time. And I've been looking, I've been watching her career and she's 
she's proficient in producing. She's got her own production company. Mm -hmm, she's mm -hmm. directing short. She's directing. Uh, she just directed her. Um, Feet, yeah, une colonie. Yes, she, yes, also yes. Did, she, also, she continues in the docu world. Um, so I was wondering what did she contribute specifically to this project? Mm. I think her, her role might have been smaller than fake tattoos. No, uh, no, actually, we had even more time okay. to consult. No, but well, for starters, I'm a fan of Geneviève's work, uh, yeah. so, so, so that, that makes it natural for me to, to, to want to go with her. Uh, again, maybe the fact that she's a woman is a plus, though I totally not chose her or worked with her because of that, but it, it maybe it was a plus in, in, in depicting what we wanted to depict. Uh, when we first sat down, she was like, what I like about your film, what I like about your proposal, written proposal, is that you make us dive into a world which we don't know, and you, by us trying to sharpen all the narrative arc, let us not lose sight of almost that sociological element. And that was fun because I know... And she also has a very uh, tame relationship with drama. And for me, sometimes I feel you put... In most narrative films would put way too much drama. Because drama can be little, but it can be magnified with the gaze, that, with the way you film stuff. Uh, I, I keep talking about, you know, the couscous scene in La Graine et le Mulet by Abdelatif yeah, Kechiche. Yeah. Like, it's more intense than most, most action films can ever be. And it's not about life or death. It's not, there's no guns involved. There's no car chases. But the couscous scene is more thrilling because you built so much time to understanding the stakes and you feel the stakes as if it's a life and death uh, experience. So we had both a, a, a relation to drama. I, I knew she would not try to pull the screenplay in a, in a good 101, three arc uh, it's a, um, narrative structure. Yeah. I knew by working with Geneviève, we could still have a, a more organic, a less, less of a good student uh, uh, screenplay. And uh, I very much like that about her. She's, she's uh, she, maybe she has that also the documentary sensibility and uh, uh, she, she contributed so much on, 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 on Nadia. Yeah, best of luck on, on hopefully the film festival circuit will be back to normal in 2021 yeah, yeah, yeah. so you'll be able to travel and, uh, mm. and engage and, with yeah. audiences with this film. That's, and, that's uh, the thing, yeah, and next time we see each other we can actually get to talk about the film yeah. because people will have seen it, so I'm very much looking forward to that. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, congratulations on the Cannes. From ironcinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.